Okay, we are joined by Maryland student athletes, Jared Bernhardt and uh, Nick Brill. We will take uh, questions for the student athletes and we'll start with Christopher Heidel of Herb FM Sports. Hey, this question for both of you guys. Uh, well, first start with Jared. Uh, just talk about uh, making it to the Final Four and also playing against, you know, in the championship game against the uh, against Virginia. Uh, yeah, I think we we're just focused on Duke. Um, you know, collective win all across the board. But uh, we'll get to that, and uh, hopefully tonight, and then carry on tomorrow. Yeah, I think we haven't really thought about Virginia yet. We had Duke today. That's a pretty big mountain to climb. Big challenge that we needed to take care of, and we'll start figuring out Virginia tonight. And if I could follow up real quick, just talk about this whole COVID-19, you guys 15-0, you know, playing the Big Ten schedule. And you know, do you think you guys would have been here you know, be at this point if uh, situations like COVID never, you know, you know, it was a little bit different? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously COVID was tough and stuff, but uh, I think even without it, I think we would have, you know, been here. We have a really good group, uh, good senior senior leadership, and then, you know, a lot of young guys, you know, looking to, to get better each day. But, uh, yeah, COVID's obviously been tough, but definitely would have been here without it too. Yeah, I think COVID just gave us an extra year to really work on the things that we were struggling with last year. So, I mean, who knows what it would have been like without COVID, but I'm just happy that we're here now. Okay, Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. Uh, yeah, for, for both of you guys, I'm, I'm curious, you know, with this season being a little disjointed or whatever and then not getting to play the usual non-conference stuff, is it harder right now to prepare for a team you haven't seen um, or, or is there no change from your perspective? Um, I mean, we've, you know, we played Virginia in the past. We played Duke in the past. Um, you know, so obviously we're able to go back and look at that film. Um well, I mean, yeah, it makes it a little tougher. You know, some teams maybe you, you wouldn't have played, you know, in years past. But uh, um, I think, you know, obviously made it, you know, better for us that we played, you know, those teams and can, can go look back at the film. Yeah, I think just playing a Big Ten um, schedule like we did. I mean, they're great teams in that, too. Uh, there's a little bit of crossover there, obviously different personnel, but some similarities that we could use that. And we have a great coaching staff that would help us with any adjustments that we need to make and make sure that we're prepared for games like today. And if I could follow up real quick, unless I'm, I'm misremembering and it, it feels like forever ago, I, I think Maryland, Virginia was the game that was going to happen before everything got shut down. Um, do you guys have any recollection of, of that and how maybe how far you were into getting ready for that game? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we were it was Thursday or Friday, I remember, and that was kind of the the end of our end of our season, I remember it pretty clearly, um, at least for me. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing with my situation, but uh, I definitely remember that day. Yeah, I think we're just preparing, making sure we're getting down to the, the nitty gritty stuff, making sure we're ready to go on Saturday. But um, I don't know exactly the personnel or adjustments that we're doing that day. But yeah, pretty pretty vividly. Great, thank you guys. Patrick Stevens, Lacrosse Magazine. This one's for Nick. Uh, defensively, you know, kind of size up the job that you guys were able to do today uh, on that offense. And, and also, if you could kind of describe from your perspective the job Logan did in, in handling a lot of shots that, that you guys probably wanted him to see, but also maybe a couple that, that he was able to steal as well. Yeah, I think overall, uh, getting ready to play an offense that's as great as Duke. I mean, the stats back it up. They have unbelievable players across the board. Um, we just wanted to make sure that we executed our game plan, did what Coach Bernhardt wanted us to do, and just kind of play our game. And I think Logan kind of just showed everyone how good he is, how underrated he is. And, yeah, I mean, he, shot, he saw shots that he wanted. But, again, I think to his credit, he was saving some that uh, we probably didn't want. So give him all the credit in the world. We love playing for him. We, we trust him wholeheartedly uh, behind us. So we're, we're just happy he plays for us. Tony Wheeler. Questions for Jared. Uh, what, what did it look like Duke's game plan was for you, uh, against you? It looks like they were sending a lot of different slides at you and giving you a lot of time actually to survey the defense back there from behind the goal. Um, what were they doing and how did you adjust and what were you seeing from your teammates? Yeah, I mean, like I said, once they slide, you just move it. You know, we got a good group, unselfish group, and, uh, you know, someone's going to be open. So, um, didn't think, you know, it's anything crazy. They said it's just, you know, it's lacrosse. Someone slides to you and just move it. If they don't, you know, you can be your matchup or just move it for somebody else to go. 
Bruce Posner. Uh, yeah, guys, first of all, congrats on getting to the final. Uh, Jared, you go up against Nick Grill, you go up against Maycar and all the shorties on Maryland. Uh, how much does that prepare you when you face other defenses and vice versa? Same question to Nick. You're guarding Jared, Logan, and, you know, we hear all the hype about these other guys. But doesn't that every day in practice just make it happen? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think about that every day. I mean, those guys are the, they're the best in the country. Um, and I get to go against them every single day for, you know, how many ever weeks. And I just, I just look at it like that. And then, you know, I think that helps our offense too. So when we come, come ready to go, it's, you know, I think it's, uh, it's helped us for sure. Yeah. And I think on the other end, I think me and Brett, Matt, we just really relish and cherish the opportunity to go against guys like Jared, Maltzy, uh Logan, they all, Bring something different to the table, but again, our offense we think is one of the best in the country. So they always get us ready. They always sharpen our like skills, make sure that we're ready to go on on weekends. So I mean, it's an it's annoying during practice covering them, but it's a great opportunity to make sure that we're getting better during during the week. We'll take two more questions for student athletes. Matt Kinnear. Hey guys, um, you know, programs all across the board. What do you the number one in that, particularly at this kind of um, this high level, when you get to the final four. Did, did you hear him? Matt, you, Matt can you, you broke up a little bit. Could you please yeah. ask that question again? Yeah, sure. The, um, you know, when you think of Maryland, you think of consistency. What is the single most deciding factor that you guys have that consistent level of play, particularly at such a, you know, deep level of the postseason like you guys have done? Um, I mean, I just credit it to all the people that came before us, you know, the standard that was set here um, and trying to pass that down. Um, you know, it really hasn't changed. And, you know, those, like I said, we, I cherish everything, all the people that came before for me and Nick um, and what they've done here um, and try to just pass that down. And it's, it's you know, as simple as that. I, I think it starts with leadership. I think our coaches and particularly our captains really set the bar and make sure we're not wavering it from it. Um, like Jared said, the bar was set, the standard was set by the Terps that came before us. So we're just making sure that that's something we pride ourselves in is really just upholding the standard and making sure that we're playing not just for ourselves, but for them. Okay, final question for the student athletes, uh, Kevin McNulty. Yeah, for Jared, you guys... Uh, had a lot of turnovers early on, but the offense really turned down the Jets there in the second quarter. Seemed like everyone got involved. What adjustments were made that allowed you guys to go on that run? Yeah, I think we were just kind of easing into the game, you know, final four game, um, you know. Um, but, yeah, just kind of settling down a little bit. You know, we know what we're capable of, you know, get the ball moving and, and such. So um, we're able to, you know, settle down and, you know. Okay, gentlemen, uh, thank you very much. Congratulations, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll be joined by Coach John Tillman shortly. Okay, we're joined by uh, Coach John Tillman uh, of Maryland. Uh, Coach, congratulations. And if you could make uh, an opening statement about the game, please. Yeah, obviously very proud of our guys um, to get a win against a great team like Duke. Um, Coach Donowski and his staff are as good as it gets, and, and it's an outstanding team. So, um, you know, to get here and, and, and bring Maryland to this weekend is really important to our school and our state and our alums. And um, obviously when you get here, you want to play well and, um, you know, to have a chance to, to get back to Memorial Day on Monday and, and, and win. Uh, just so proud of the guys' team effort. I thought from defense to face-offs to goalie play to offense, uh, that's probably the best 60 minutes we played all year. Okay, for media that have questions, please raise your virtual hand and we'll call on you. And we'll start with Mike Barber from the Richmond Times-Dispatch. Hey, Coach, congratulations. I I'm curious if you're willing to think back uh, when the pandemic hit, you were scheduled to host Virginia. Uh, that was the game before it all kind of went down. I just was curious what you remember about that, how far along in your preparation you were, and just kind of what memories that might bring back. 
Yeah, I just think, remember, you know, just kind of a, a surreal feel that week of, you know, something's going on. Um, you know, I remember getting ready. We had, we had lost a game against Navy a couple of weeks prior that got canceled. Um, and then, you know, kind of moved into, I think we had played Notre Dame and then Albany and then Virginia was next. And all of a sudden, something just didn't seem right. You know, they started canceling. I think the big thing that got me concerned was canceling. I think the NBA got put on hold and then all of a sudden the basketball tournaments got put on hold. Um, and you just had a sense that all of a sudden, like things were going to sit still and there's a, probably a chance this game wasn't going to be played. So, um, and then, uh, just again, very surreal, just telling the kids to go home um, and not knowing when we'd see them again, not really knowing, you know, the extent of what, you know, the next 16 months would be. So uh, very strange times. Uh, I, I know, obviously, we were very excited about the game because we have so much respect for Virginia and, and their program and their talented team and defending national champions for a reason. Thank you. Jacob Aaron Steinberg. Hey, Coach, is there anything tangible that you can point to late in the second quarter that allowed you guys to make that four-goal run before the half, and then it seemed like that really springboarded your momentum heading into the second half? Um, I just felt like in that second quarter, you know, we were able to, to get face-offs. Uh, I thought Logan was playing well, so we were good in the special teams. Um, you know, you get a goal from your face-off guy, and, and we've been – We've been okay. We've been good at times, but not necessarily maybe at the standard we'd love to be. Um, but in big moments, we've actually had some guys come through. And I thought Justin Shockey really gave us just great minutes today. Um, you know, gets a goal, but more importantly, um, just felt like we got possessions in that second quarter. Um, and that was huge for us. Um, and again, when you get one from your, your face-off guy, that's a big energy boost. Um, and then, you know, defensively, I just thought those guys just kept giving us opportunities. And again, when you're getting the face-offs with that, you can get into a rhythm and a flow, and that helps so much. Patrick Stevens, Lacrosse Magazine. John, uh, defensively, what, what do you kind of make of, of what you guys were able to do against that particular offense? And did you sense that that was a group that felt like it was – it was being challenged this week in maybe a way that uh, it hadn't been previously or, per, or at least perception wise anyway. Well, looking at the tape, you, you kind of looked and said, all right, we played like a very similar offense to a certain extent. And again, that's a lot of respect to Duke and Notre Dame's offenses. Um, you had a Twarton candidate, um, a very dangerous guy behind the goal. They set a lot of picks for him, dynamic player, makes guys around him better, can score, um, and then very athletic and very organized. Um, I mean, we kind of joked in the beginning of the week, it was like getting ready for the NBA All-Star team, you know, like the Western All-Stars, you know, and just so many good players out there that were dangerous. But we did feel like getting ready for Notre Dame, uh, some of what they do um, did carry over, whether it's big little picks behind and dynamic Dodger, but also some of the the, the wing action and, and the, the the sets that they run. So it helped. Um, and, and to be honest with you, it kind of needed to because we were gassed from that game on Sunday. Um, that was, you know, it, it took us uh, maybe three, four days to get beyond that physically. Um, and that was very concerning. We went super light this week, um, but we felt like we were going to trust Grill. Um, we had all year. Michael Sowers is awesome. Um, I mean, such a good player. And I remember watching him when he was younger. Um, he's as good as advertised, but we, we just have so much confidence in Nick um, and we have veteran short sticks. So we felt like that would help us. Um, and we just hoped that we could do okay at that matchup. And um, it turned out pretty well. And when we didn't, I just felt like Logan bailed us out a few times and made some timely saves um, that really helped us when maybe there were some opportunities for them. And to, and to follow up on that, on what you're saying about Logan, you know, he's obviously had a, a fairly steady season, but, but do you feel like, you know, when you, to piggyback off of what you said earlier about this being as, as good a game that you played 60 minutes was, was that as good as game as he's played since he's been in college park? Yeah, I would say that would be his best game. Um, obviously we're, we're, we're still, not too long from it. And sometimes you can think emotionally, but I mean, he had two games last year. So he's, you know, he's basically just completing almost, you know, a full year normally. 
non-COVID, you know, you're usually getting 13, 14 games and, and then your conference tournament. So he, it's amazing to think that he's only started 16 games. Um, he just is super cool. Um, he's a guy that like the guys love playing for because he never points the finger. Um, he never looks like he's rattled. So there's always a lot of confidence and faith out there. And what I loved last week was maybe it wasn't his best like saving day, but he stole some possessions and was able to navigate some clears and get us out of trouble I felt like he got some saves today and still continued to do that um, and then got some possessions back so um, sometimes people don't see those ground balls but those are as good as saves um, and that helped us big time okay we'll have two more questions to coach Christopher Heidel Herb, Herb FM Sports please hey uh, Chris John congratulations on making it to the championship game on set on Monday what does this mean for the the his for lacrosse in Maryland and Virginia, having both two schools playing each other, you know, on Monday. Yeah, I, I certainly speaking for, for our state where lacrosse is so important. Um, and then our school where lacrosse is obviously a premier sport and has a, just a great tradition of great players and great teams. Um, we are really prideful um, to make sure that each year, you know, we live up to the standard of the program and add another chapter to it of the book of Maryland lacrosse, not only on the field, but off the field. And um, I had an alum text me yesterday with um, a little snapshot from the 1978 um, handbook from Bud Beardmore that talked about be the best. And um, again, a lot of what was in that handbook talked about being the best version of yourself on and off the field academically, um, you know, being great members of our community. So um, again, trying to live up to that standard and, and make sure that, you know, a lot of guys created this tradition. We got to make sure we do our part. Um, you know, Lars is a guy I respect a ton. Um, that program, obviously, they're reigning national champions. They're a who's who. Uh, in terms of recruits and they're very talented and always have been. Um, so um, I think you look at, you know, how far away from, from each other we are, it's not too, too far. So I think there's a lot of natural interest in that mid Atlantic um, just because of the history and then so many kids playing. Okay. Final question for coach from Kyle Devitt. Coach uh, Anthony DeMeo uh, coming in, getting you started with a, a goal and two assists really early on. Uh, he's a player that kind of explodes at different times for you guys. He's very unpredictable. Um, how did you deploy him today so that he had such, such success? You know, with the way we play, Kyle, a, a big part of it is, is trying to, um, and we've kind of morphed into that over the last few years. You know, we, we, we have, you know, you kind of look at what you have and in and, and 17 and 16, you know, we had Matt and Colin and, um, you know, Connor Kelly and some of those guys, and they, we tried to devise schemes that kind of suited them. Um, and we were a little bit more of just kind of lining up and playing and we were a little bit more predictable, um, but it made it easy for looks. And, and we had guys that, that, that is suited pretty well and the still talented players. But I think with this group, there's a lot of versatile parts and flexible parts. And um, we give them a lot of freedom because there's a lot of trust. Um, there's a lot of decisions to be made. Um, but Anthony always seems to like just find little windows. Um, I think guys are looking for him. If you kind of help too much to him, um, you know, he'll find the open guy. Um, very crafty was a high school attackman. So, you know, you're getting a guy coming out and, and it's playing with an extra attackman, which obviously, you know, you love having all that skill. Um, and he's a guy, if he gets in good spots, we, we trust him so much shooting the ball. He, he's a sniper. But again, you saw some of the, his assists and things like that. He's a, just an awesome passer, too. Coach, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations, and we'll see you tomorrow for the uh, pre-championship press conference. Thank you.